The great thing about Forge and Fire is it brings attention to the art of bladesmithing. I think there's an elegance and beauty in creating something as dangerous as a sword. My name is Rod Hughes, I'm 60 years old and I'm a bladesmith. I've been a bladesmith for about 10 years and previous to that I was in engineering. I think the sky's the limit, anything that you can imagine you can do. There's no right or wrong way to do it. My forge is fairly unusual in that I have a Viking forge. Basically it's got two fairly conventional sets of bellows made from sheepskin and wood and a forge here where I can keep the charcoal and I can get things fairly hot. I like to combine forging blades with sculpture. I'm currently working on a pirate cutlass and the cutlass has a beautiful blade but the sculptural aspect is the bronze hilt and the hilt depicts the legend of the mermaid of Zena. It shows a mermaid pulling a sailor down to his doom. Cutlass was traditionally used by various navies and it was a boarding weapon and a defence weapon. It was much shorter than a conventional sword and had a handguard because of the proximity of the opponents. Now I've ground the blade down to a reasonable size, I'm going to finally harden it by putting it in coals, taking it up to temperature and then quenching it. Next I make a wax positive. That's a model of the bronze hilt that I want to make. We then heat up the mould, the wax melts and we pour it out and that leaves a void and in the void we then cast our bronze hilt. So you can see it's cast well up to the top here and it's filled all the different ports and it's fed bronze to all the different places. That's as good as you get. And there you have it, the finished cutlass. It's a beautiful thing. It's a nice combination of sculpture and a lethal blade. It tells the story of the mermaid of Zena. It shows her drowning the sailor and you can see the skulls as she takes him down to his doom. I'm really pleased with this.